11, got fired from my job, AKA promoted to a customer. I was making 70, 80 grand a year. Uh, went about 100, $110,000, $115,000 in debt. Almost lost this house that's now on the market. Um, had some breakthroughs with MLM 2012, 2014. Got out of that $110,000 in debt. Uh, 2015, started traveling the United States, been to 39 states. Uh, we travel, you know, 17 states, uh, 65 days at a time. Uh, took my kids to Hawaii for 31 days. You know, these are all the things I'm proud of because. Welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness and Fulfillment Talk podcast, where we bring to you the most successful, happy, fulfilled gentlemen from around the world who have been able to conquer themselves, their life, their marriage, and their businesses. You will be learning from four dimensional gentlemen who have cracked the code to the science of having it all. The question is, how can married entrepreneurs with kids become gentlemen, achieve true freedom, and build a successful, happy, and fulfilled life, marriage, and business? This show will give you the answer for that. My name is Alex Ramirez, and I'm your host, and you're welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness, Fulfillment Talk podcast. Hello, beautiful people. So I'm excited to have uh, for another episode of the Modern Gen- of the Gentleman's Success, Happiness and Fulfillment Talk, I have another, another incredible guest. But before I introduce him, I just want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been leaving reviews on, on the major podcasting pl- platforms, Apple, Spotify, Google, and to those who have been watching on YouTube as well. Thank you very much. And I, I, would, I would love for you to leave a review or a comment and subscribe. And 99, 99% of people who watch this will never take action, will never leave a review or a comment. But the 1% of you who do are the ones who make all the difference. So to you, I say thank you. And today I have, I lost it, uh, Jermaine Steele, right? Is, no that, worries. is that how you yep. pronounce it, man? You, you got it. Yeah, I get Jeremiah, cool. Jer- Germany, the whole nine, but you got it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Jermaine yep. Steele. And uh, I, met, I met this man a couple, of, uh, a couple of months back. We had an amazing conversation for like two hours. So it was yep. great. And now I'm having him on my podcast. He's a... Uh, Loving father, multiple six-figure earner, traveling beast, and coach to many six- and seven-figure entre- entrepreneurs. I'm excited. So what's up, man? Thank you for being here. Man, you know, we just got back in late last night, as I told you, and had a little bit of uh, issues this morning. But as entrepreneurs, we pivot and we make it. But uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you as well, uh, you know, to your viewers, but first and foremost to you for having me on. So, you know, we're good. You know, we kind of got in here last minute making it happen, but I- I'm good. I appreciate you for having me on. Yeah. Awesome, yep. man. Yeah, um, you're welcome and thank you as well, man. So of course, let's see, man. The way that I that, that I like to start these interviews is uh, okay. I like to put my guests on the line, sure. Uh, you know, like a little bit uncomfortable, and tell them to introduce themselves, right? Sure. And tell us about their entrepreneurial journey in six okay. in seventy seconds or less. Oh wow, that's that's hard. Uh, so it is. Two, it is. Two thousand eleven got fired from my job, aka promoted to a customer. I was making seventy, eighty grand a year. Uh, went about one hundred, one hundred ten, hundred fifteen thousand dollars in debt. Almost lost this house that's now on the market. Um, had some breakthroughs with MLM, two thousand twelve, two thousand fourteen. Got out of that one hundred and ten thousand dollars in debt. Uh, two thousand fifteen started traveling the United States. Been to thirty nine states. Uh, we travel you know, 17 states, uh, 65 days at a time, uh, took my kids to Hawaii for 31 days. You know, these are all the things I'm proud of because back when, you know, I first started, I thought I was going to lose everything, you know, including this house, my family, my, you know, my kids, because if, if I don't figure this out, I'm done. Right. And so, um, I guess that wasn't that hard. Right. But to fast forward till today, yeah, we travel 70, 80% of the year. Uh, we specialize in e-commerce. So we run everything from Amazon, eBay, uh, Walmart, to you know, Etsy uh, and and a few different platforms. So um, yeah, I guess it wasn't that hard, right? <laughs> it wasn't that hard, man. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, so, you travel 70, mm-hmm. 70 to eighty percent of the of the year. Yes, sir. So we're gone about uh, three out of the four weeks, typically, maybe two and a half, three weeks out of the four weeks of your month. Mm-hmm. You have a mobile home. I we do, do yeah. Right? We do, yeah. Well, we got a, a travel trailer. We're looking to upgrade to like you know just the, the actual motor homes. Um, but right now we pull with the tr- a truck, and we've had that for seven years. So for the last seven years, you know, six, seven years, I'd say, um, we've been, yeah, everywhere from, you know, Texas, uh, Tennessee, Florida, Orlando, you know, Black Hills Mountains in South Dakota. Um, yeah, name a city, we might have we been there, right? So, yeah, that, that's and exhilarating for me. this is a possibility. 
this is the yeah. possibility when you when you have like a business online and you help people with their online businesses like Amazon and, and e-commerce right. and Shopify and right. all of that, right? Right. Because so, you, you still work, right? Or, or do you not oh, work when you travel? No, we, we, we work remotely. So I'm always working. It's funny because people will see me post like, good morning, Facebook, or on my stories, and we'll be like Vegas or uh, Pismo Beach or whatever. We just came back from there. And uh, people say, I know you're busy, but when you get back to work, and I'm like, I'm always working. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, it doesn't, it's, it's around the clock. So um, I, I read a meme once and it said uh, something about a nine to five, but we have a 24 seven. You, you know what I mean? When you're, when, <laughs> yeah. when you're, when you're really committed to your business, uh, freedom is one thing. Right. But being able to execute, deliver and, uh, you know, to your customers is another thing. And so we, we stay busy, but we're actually coming up on a break that I'm really excited about from the 12th to 26th. We shut down all the stores and we're going to have an actual break. Yeah. So we really don't take a lot of days off. We work remotely um, and I have certain times throughout the day where I just block it out. And if somebody says, hey, can you call me? I say no. So I've learned mm -hmm. to kind of ba balance and, and manage my time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, and sure. I can I can I'm a testimony for that because you did. You know, say because we we've been trying to have this interview for for a while now, right? And like right, you right. had to say no, you said no, and you know we were have we, we had the, the the opportunity to jump on it today, and yes. uh, we're making it happen. But yeah, man. Yes, sir. So man, so I'm excited then to ask you about. Sure. What do you think about you know this this life and business balance that most people seem to want? Well, shout out. I'm going to say David Sharp. Shout out uh, David Sharp. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he was a leader in one of the companies that I was involved with. And he always said uh, some people would be preaching the dream, but living the nightmare. Right. Uh -huh. And so for a, for a while, I'm going to be honest, like back in you know the MLM days, like it started to feel like that because I was working from four in the morning till 10 at night, always doing calls, always doing something. Now it's just a little bit different. We have those times throughout the day where we could try to balance it, you know, But, but to talk about life balance, I think it's, I think it's overrated, but it, it definitely is achievable. You know, four hour work week, if people haven't read that book, um, you know, I think those things are definitely achievable when you get to certain levels, but when you're building, 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 right. Let's say building your thirties uh, or whatever, forties, and then, you know, uh, reap those benefits in your fifties or whatever the case may be. I think that that's a little bit more realistic for people like myself that went a hundred thousand dollars in debt. You know what I mean? Uh, bought a, a regular single family home, the, the, the home that I still live in. And, and just trying to make everything work, right? So people say, oh, are you going to get a new mansion? Are you going to get this or that? And yeah, we've done the cars and the mobile home and the traveling, but people didn't see when I had to get out of 110 to even $200,000 in debt because I also owed child support, the IRS, you name it, I owed them. So it was more like 200K in debt. And so to pay that off took me about two years. So I think life in balance is uh, something that, that people speak of all the time, mm -hmm. which is achievable, but it's also something that is, is probably not very realistic for most people Uh, in the be beginning stages of entrepreneurship exactly yeah 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 so the, so the way there's nothing passive about building passive income R right yeah what's yeah exactly right and I, and i mean go ahead go ahead no no no. You know, say to a degree you know the, the passive income i saw when when i was involved with these mlms you know i'd sign people up and the next thing i look oh they're signing people up right but then i still have to reach out and coach and mentor when those people fell off from those people it, it affected me So I'd still have to reach out and say, hey, what do you think's happening? Uh, you know, some coaching needs to take place. Uh, do they need to learn how to blog? Do they need to learn SEO? Do they learn Facebook ads? Whatever the case may be, I still had to follow up. So it, it can be passive to a degree, but I think that everything that is included within that passive income stream takes uh, structure. You know, it takes uh, leadership. And so, you know, not everybody's able to just have that passive income where it's like, oh yeah, money's just flying in and I'm sitting here doing nothing. I, I mean- And like they say, faith without work is dead, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, man, so talking about this, uh, so you started your your career in uh, in MLM, right? Well, not started, I did. but yeah, well, yeah, aff affiliate marketing uh, mm -hmm. systems. I like the, the affiliate models, you know, a little bit better. But I, I did fall into some MLMs. You know, Wake Up Now, they're long gone. Um, I'll say it, Empower Network. You know, that was a big company. You know, we made about 350, 400 k there, so it was part of our breakthrough. It's where I was met David insurance? Sharp. No, actually, it was blo a blogging platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, it was a blogging platform. So a lot of, a lot of great leaders, I would say, in, in our industry kind of stem from that. You know what I mean? David Sharp was, was the co-founder. Um, you know, a lot of different names out there. But people that uh, understood affiliate marketing did really well with this, like myself, because I was a blogger. So I started on Fiverr, man. I was still working a job, making five, ten bucks. Uh, I think most people are familiar with Fiverr, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh the you know freelancer or whatever and so i started just blogging 
And so I saw that I could, cause I could write about 70 words a minute. I could type. So I would blog for like five, 10 bucks. And I'm like, wait, I just made 10 bucks in seven minutes. Right. But then I realized that that only lasted so long. And so when Empower Network came along, I started blogging, getting a lot of traffic. I was getting 1500, 2,500 visits a day, going to events and people were saying, man, can we take pictures? And you know, that little mini celebrity status within a, within an MLM. Right. And so I would say that that, that business was more a affiliate marketing uh, model business versus like actual MLM, like Herbalife or Amway or ACN or some of the other ones out there, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, so what do you, um, so when you say I fell into MLM, is, mm-hmm. do you say that because like, uh, you have like a bad, did, were you, did you, did you get out of it with a bad taste of, of MLM or like, why? Not, necess- not necessarily. I got sick of, to be honest, me, me, uh, personally, I didn't, I wasn't attached to products at the time that were, they say be a product of the product, right? So mm-hmm. in Empower Network, I was blogging, doing all these things, but I fell into some other MLMs just by the way of, oh, let me blog, let me do this, let me let me sign people up, right? And then I realized very quickly that I wasn't, I started to actually backtread because I wasn't focused on people like I was before. I says, you know what, let me take my, my status and let me just sign up people for this and sign up people for that. And so I started feeling like I was dragging people through the mud. So integrity, mm-hmm. you know, I guess kicked in. I like to sleep at night kind of thing. And so I started to kind of phase away from that because I, I think, you know, the true statistics of, of MLM is, you know, the, the percentage like that succeed. 3%, 5%. 3%, 3%, 5%, maybe you get 10%. So in 15, I was done. Like I was actually like 14, but the end of 15, I was like, I'm going to go to e-commerce because I was already doing Teespring and selling t-shirts and Facebook ads and all these different things. So at the end of 2000, let's see, yeah, 14, moving into 15, I said, I, w- I don't, I don't want to deal with as many people because we recruited thousands of people and they just... You know, people can become, uh, they suck the energy out of you if you allow them to, right? And so I was that person because in the restaurant, you know, I managed 120 employees. I got shingles from stress because I allowed myself to overexert, overexert, overexert. And so, you know, I tell you what, uh, I see a lot of people like yourself, dude, you're full of energy. It's amazing, right? Like you're like half my age. And I tell people, you know, if I was 10, 20 years younger, at least that's my excuse, right? Mm Mm-hmm then I felt like I could do all these things. But as I get older, I have to allow my, myself ways to kind of pull back. And so in the restaurant, I felt like I was just drowning in, in responsibility and stress and things like that. So I started to feel the same way uh, inside of MLM. So if you ask about a bad taste, the only bad taste I really had was just my health, uh, you know, preserving my peace, preserving uh, my time and respecting myself and not allowing others to just um, eat that up. You know what I mean? Because they will if you allow them to. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. So, so I feel so, I don't know, how can I say, like validated or, or like, uh, not validated, but like good, just good. Because validated. No, no, it, that's the right word. Validated. Good. Validated. From, from the beginning, yeah. I'm focusing on having it all right. Like right. health, wealth, relationships. Right. So, right. you know, you, you, you were probably young during this MLM, you know, younger during this MLM, you had a lot of energy. You thought that you could do a lot. And uh, like, like shit, it, it was taken away from other, other things right. of your life um, right. because like you were focused on the money, right? Yep. Yep. And, and now you're like traveling with your family and, 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 and you know, spending more time resting, uh, coming at it from a wiser point of view, right? right, right which right. is right. So it, it's, a, it's a really good perspective to have a really good perspective shift. So, man, so, you know, you, you were talking about Facebook ads and e-commerce and all of that. And right, the majority right. of, of, of the, the interviews that I've done with, with this, with successful married entrepreneurs with kids, okay. we talk about like mindset stuff and, and like habits and stuff like that. Right. Right. But I'm right, excited right. to jump into what is it like the one skill that like someone could learn right now, man, right uh, now. one valuable skill, mark one valuable marketable and scalable skill that someone okay. can learn to start okay. making a lot of money. Okay. So. What I always tell people, and this is this kind of goes back to my fan page days. I still have, I own a lot of fan pages. I have fan pages in the grandma niche with 250,000 people, autism, 50,000 likes. So I can go throw out a post, right? And, and reach and span an audience, right? And so something I taught starting back in 2015 was to go out, you know, find a niche. I think one of the, the easiest things that, that people teach, you know, find a niche, um, kind of overrated in the sense, but I'll tell you that it can be done. You know, you can go out, you can, you can create a fan page about dogs. You could create a, a, a fan page about grandmothers and autism, all these different things. And, and it's free. Right. And then you go to like ClickBank or you go to like commission junction uh, or you go to, you know, any different affiliate platform where you can affiliate yourself with for, for free. And then, you know, you start to drive some traffic. 
So, you know, I know that that one includes money, right? Facebook ads, but I mean, I teach people two bucks a day, three bucks a day. So from the niche side of things, you know, people like to see a result. So if they build up a fan page and it's all about dogs or entrepreneurship, or maybe some people do inspirational quotes. So they just post quotes all day, run a little bit of traffic, but then they start seeing a result. And so I think that that's the biggest thing with people is, is a lot of times, yeah, you got to get the mindset, right? Right. But at the end mm-hmm. of the day, if, if somebody goes six months, 12 months, 18 months, and I saw it on their life savings, like including myself, and they go broke, then what? What do they got to do? They go back to work, right? So, so at the end of the day, what I'm saying is mindset is you have to have it, but the results is what people want. So doing something like creating a fan page, you know, on Facebook, um, you know, finding a, a niche like dog training, getting that product within ClickBank, and then starting to target uh, dog magazines within the interests inside of Facebook. So, I mean, super simple. I mean, something we could do in like 15 minutes, you know what I mean, uh, here live. And so aside of that, so I'm going to give two things. I know you said one, but two, and it kind of goes hand in hand. If I were to start over, what I would do is I would align myself with local businesses, right? Um, could be a restaurant. It could be, uh, you know, an insurance agency. We've done a lot of work for different insurance agencies locally. Uh, it could be a real estate agent. Right. And so once you learn that small skill set, I say small, but it, it, it's extensive if you get into like targeting and conversion pixels and all these different things. But with Facebook ads, you, you could find a real estate agent or in those businesses that I mentioned. And then you go out and you you teach them how to build up a fan page. Right. You teach them how to do those three simple things that we spoke of, but in retrospect to their business. So, oh, you need to generate more uh, clients for your restaurant, let's say, or more customers for your restaurant. So you build a fan page based around their restaurant. Let's just say, um, you know, Alex's whatever shop, right? And so mm-hmm. now you start to, you build the page about Alex's shop and then you target people in your, in your area. Like what city are you in? Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix, okay. So it's a huge area. So now you start to target people, uh, Phoenix within around like 10 miles of your restaurant, right? So remember, you're teaching this as the consultant, as the expert. So this is what I'm giving as value is you go to the, the restaurant owner and you say, look, do you have a fan page? No, I'm too busy for all that. But once they're mm-hmm. convinced that they need it and they're starting to see it everywhere, social media, they know they need it. Then you say, OK, uh, what I'll do is I'll build you a fan page. You know, I'll build the fan page for free because it takes two minutes. Uh, right. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Then I want to sit down with you. And I have what's called a 72 point checklist that I used to use a lot when I would sit down with local businesses. And I would sit down and say, do you have all these different things? And they would go, oh, my gosh, I'm missing all these different things. And so and then you say, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they freak out. So, okay, so now that I've, you know, sold you in the sense why, you know, you, you see what you don't have. Here's your fan page. I built it for free. If I could get you five people through the door in the next week, would you, would you believe that this works? Well, yeah, if you could do it for free. And then you run 10, 20 bucks uh, in, in Facebook ads around the Phoenix area, targeting people that like other shops in, in your niche. And then the people on Facebook start to see those ads. They start to trickle through the door. And then that's where you say, hey, pay me $9.95 a month. I'll run your Facebook ads. I'll run all your social media, all these different things. And then you go outsource it to freelance or Fiverr or whatever, you know? So, yeah. Cool. Tactics, strategy, you know, like you said, because. So I simple, get, man. Like yeah. right now, man, like I, I, I've experienced this. So I, I actually started MLM, right? Okay. Like selling insurance. But then right. I, I figured out that it was easy to sell an $8,000 service for three months to an insurance agency owner who needed leads right. than to sit down with a person at their house and sell them a $50 per month policy. Right. All right. And yeah. so, so, man, so like what you are saying right now, such a simple thing, right? Can right. like literally start making you thousands of dollars in a couple of weeks from now, which yeah. is crazy, it, right? It, it, but what it, do you it think? It is crazy. Mm-hmm. What do you so, so then now going back again to, to like mindset, like what right, is right. going to hold people back from actually, you know, go, going and reaching out to a restaurant, to a real estate agent, to uh, like an insurance agent or whatever, you know, a mom and a mom and a mom and pop shop, whatever. And like actually like sitting down with them, offering all of this stuff. Like, what do you think is actually going to keep them from taking this action and getting the results? So, so I think going back to what you said, mindset, number one, I think a few things, right? So mindset, number one, not, not having the mindset, thinking that they're worth it, thinking that you know, they have the clarity, like you speak a lot about clarity on what exactly it is, because I could say it here. And then they're like, wait, what did Jermaine say to say and all these different things. So having the clarity, having the articulateness, if that's even a word, like you're very articulate, right? So being able to articulate yourself, having the mindset to even just step foot in that place. Number two, feeling good about a result that you've gotten prior to, right? So like a lot of people that work with you, they get a lot of results, right? So as they start to feel better about the results that they're getting, they can walk into the restaurant confidently, you know, not feeling discouraged and things like that. And then, and then 
you know, uh, consult with a business or feel confident enough to do it. And then I think three, just consistency and habit and, and doing it enough to where it's not just something that we spoke about earlier. Oh, let me just try to make some money. No, let mm. me try to let me actually try to help this business get leads or let me try to help this restaurant get customers or whatever the case may be, you know? Yeah. And, and with, like with you the said, so, so, so simple. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, so, like mm -hmm. what you're saying right now, that's golden. I actually just watched a video of a guy. Uh, I don't know if you know who Ravi Abubala is. I, I haven't heard of him. No, but I'll, I'll he's a systems him. guy, scaling okay. with systems. So uh, this, he said, like, what well, what would I do if I would start if I started from the beginning, right? So, like okay. with nothing, right, right, um, right. to make my first million. And he said, there's three steps. Step number one is right. um, learn a valuable skill, a valuable, marketable, and scalable skill, which is Facebook ads, right? Like right now, right, right. building a fan page, learning how to run right. ads locally, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is, um, you know, picking the right. Uh, vehicle. So in, in this case, right. you know, we talked about picking a restaurant or picking real estate or whatever, or picking coaches or picking e-commerce, right? Picking the right vehicle. And then right. the third one, uh, he said, surrounding yourself with a group of people, right? With a mastermind. So right. to go back to the first two, you learn Facebook ads, what you just talked about right now. You right. pick the right vehicle. Let's say that you go to restaurants, you know, that might not be the right vehicle because like, it's, it, you know, it, it's like locally, there's a, there's right, a right. Uh, there's a like a, an amount of, of restaurants that you can target in, a, in an area, right? Right, right. But still, like you go, you you know, run ads for them, get the results, charge them money. Pretty simple. Yep. So, what what's gonna what's gonna keep them from taking? And you can go and learn ads on YouTube, yeah, by the way, on, right? Literally, no, literally, right, right. And but what's going to keep someone like right now, someone who wants to make five thousand dollars can go and do this for the next month and get two, three clients and and, and start making some money already. But what, right. what will keep them from taking action is belief and boss, man. There you go. But I like you it. said, belief and boss, belief in like if they're worth it or whatever. Uh, and then the boss to like actually take action, having the courage and the clarity to actually do it. And that's what right. it all comes down to, man. That's what I'm so passionate about what I do because it all comes down to belief and the boss. So I'm running a five day clarity challenge. That's why I've been talking so much about clarity uh, right, right, this right. couple of, of, of weeks. And right. I didn't know how to run a challenge, how to pull it off, right? There's people out there who, like have an entire business teaching other people how to run a challenge. Right. And I didn't know how to do it, man, but I'm pulling it off because I just have belief in boss, believe in boss to take it. action and put it, pulling it off. Uh, three months I, ago I, when we talked, I yeah, didn't yeah. have any, anyone on my podcast. How, how long did we talk ago, man? Like two months, it's been three about months? three months. Yeah. Maybe three and a half. Mm -hmm. I think October, uh, no, excuse me, September, I think pushing for like October and then yeah. We had some I think when we up, spoke, but... I barely started my podcast. Maybe one person I, I had. Right yeah. now, I have like 25, 25 high wow. level men. That's not amazing. even six figure entrepreneurs, but like seven, right. eight, and nine men. Not even right. six, right? I love seven, it. eight, I love nine it. figure entrepreneurs. And I didn't know how to, how to, how to like uh, start a podcast, how to right. talk to this high level man or whatever. All it took, and there's, and there's people out there who have, who their entire business revolves around teaching you how to start a podcast, right? And use it to right, like, right. grow your business and they charge right. thousands of dollars for it. And all it took for me, man, was belief in boss. Well, see, I, to speak on that, man, there, like you said, there's a lot of people out here that will tell you, you need this or you need that, right? Versus assessing the person that you are. So I always say meet people where they're at. So it's like if, let's say, just for example, you know, let's say you did, you came to me for coaching, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say, oh, you need this and this and that to line yourself up with the branded podcast and do all these extra fancy things because you're already doing them. You, you know what I mean? But I think a lot of times, uh, you know, we'll just say gurus, which actually just means teacher, right? But gurus will, will kind of, and MLMs will do the same thing, will dumb you down to believe that you only should be doing certain things when you can really just go out and do it. You know, and, th and that's what I've done. I started blogging and you know, I started signing people up. You know, they said two people a day back when I was recruiting. So guess what I did Two, at least two people a day. You know what I mean? And so to just go out and do something, I think is more inspiring to people than, oh yeah, I learned it, you know, and learn from people and, and have mentors and pay for mentors and all these different things. Of course, 100%. But I think a lot of times what people don't realize the most inspiring is when you just go out and do something. That's why when we spoke, I was just like, and you already knew it because you have the belief in balls, as you say, right? So you already knew you're, I'm telling, cause I'm telling you and I, you didn't need me, need me to tell you, but I'm like, bro, you're so far ahead of, of people that are, you know, twice your age or people that are, you know, whatever age doesn't really matter, I guess. Right. But at the same time, just the amount of steam and stamina, you know, pun intended, it's amazing, man. And so I'd like to see that, you know, in 10 years where, you know what I mean, where you are. So. Um, yeah. it, it's just, but, but again, back to, to, like you said, belief in balls is the, is the, 
um, core of the conversation. And if you don't have that, then, and, and I've been through this, I'll tell you right now, I've been through so many times in my, in my, you know, uh, career or whatever you want to say industry in the industry where I didn't do things like launch a, a plugin for a software or something like that, because I didn't have the belief that it was going to do as well as X, Y, and Z person out there making a hundred thousand a month. But once mm -hmm. I did these things, I realized that, yeah, maybe I didn't make a hundred, but guess what? I made an extra 25,000, you know what I mean? Or whatever. And so it just, you're, you're so on the money and people need uh, guys like you to really uh, show them these things and 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 unravel them because there's not as many people that will spend as much time as you. And I, I say this because I watch your story, you know, as, as I'm scrolling from time to time and I see how much you do, right? Like you said, uh, you said health, wealth and uh, uh, financial, right? And so just by watching you, I can see those things, you know, your kids and um, is it two or just no? Yes, yeah, two, I just right? Have one. No, no, I just one, have one. one. The, the girl, yeah, yeah, my, my fault. Yeah, I'm thinking somebody else, but the one kid and, uh, you know, you're always teaching her something. You guys are always doing something. You're always, you know, out on your uh, utility vehicle and, and just giving value. And so, again, that's what people should be doing, you know, is, is giving value, is, is being present, uh, not looking for ways to just passively relieve themselves of these activities and watch the Skittles fall from the sky, you know, so because they're not. Yeah, man. Man, you know, you, you want to know something that I was thinking about right now? I actually just realized that I, I, I had never seen your face, man. Really? Like we talked, but we talked on the phone. Like we didn't. Oh, okay. 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 Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, and I, I was thinking that like, you have a really cool vibe, right? Like the way you talk and like the way you look and everything, it's just really cool. I like it. Thanks, man. No, I, and I think that that was to speak on that from like, let's say, let's say 10 years ago, you know, I was 31 mm -hmm. you know, I'll be 40, 41 in, in about nine days Well, 10 days. And, uh, going back to like the MLM days, you know, and of course I'm all, I don't know where they are, but oh, here we go. And, and most people say, um, you know, I don't recognize you. I go, well, now do you, right? <laughs> so <laughs> they're like, it's nighttime, man. You're still, wearing... I go, yeah, I wear my shades whenever. And they're, they're actually um, Snapchat glasses, right? But here's my point is that I've wore those things for 10 years as part of my brand. And so when I would go to events and, and typically I would attract uh, male from 24 to 38, right? So they say like attracts like. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, you might attract people as young as yourself. You might attract, you might attract everything. But at the end of the day, I would attract a lot of people that would come to me because they've been in the streets like myself, for one. Um, they were a regular person working a job and, 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 you know, a career or as a corporate manager like me for two. And then for three, they just go, this guy's just a regular guy. If he could do it, I could do it. So I get guys coming to me saying, man, I want to work with you because you just, you seem cool. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, so um like I said, I'm a, I'm a people person. I, I, I was in the restaurant for 15 years and I try to lift people to the sky, right? I would be like, you be the manager. I'll go manage another store or, or you be the manager. And they go, well, what's going to happen to you? I go, you know what? As long as I can lift you up, it doesn't matter. I'll figure it out. I'll find something else. You know what I mean? But yeah. in, in, in corporate world, there's always a ceiling. You can only go so far. I was making 70, 80 grand a year, but in order to take my boss's uh, Max's job to make 125, God forbid something would have to happen to him or you have to go to another area. So point being that I would lift people up, lift people up in the restaurant, but you can only lift them so high as to where in this industry, man, I got people that make five, six, seven times as much as we do in a month. You, you know what I mean? And so uh, that's what I love about this. And some people even ask me, they'll say, hey, like Nate, one of my students, you know, Nate's done 20, 25 million in sales since he's met me in 2012. And they say, well, you know, your, your guy's best month has been, you know, only you know, 90,000 or whatever. His best month has been 200,000. How does that make you feel? Like I'm supposed to feel bad about it, right? No, it you're supposed you feel to feel amazing. good. Yeah. Because, and this is what I tell people. One, he's my student. And two, I, I, I'm, you know, and I've learned things from him. I'm his mentor. But at the same time, you know, if he knows what he knows and he knows what I know, because I've spilled into him, right? And like I said, I've learned things from him in, in, reciprocally. But if he knows what he knows and he knows what I know, he knows more than me. <laughs> So, so, you know, at the end of the day, someone should be able to take that in and run with it. But like you said, most people won't run with it. And that's why I found that there's very, um, I'll say it, there's very few people, dozens. I mean, there's dozens that I could name, go to this profile, go to that profile. And they're doing six and seven figures and they weren't when they met me. But, I, you know, if I could say three, four, five dozen people that I could point out their profile, imagine the thousands and thousands and thousands of people that we've, that I've dealt with. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So on, on a scale, it's a small percentage. People go back to work. Um, you know, they, they, they get into other things, which may not be a bad thing. You know, some people take their skill sets from fan pages and they go work for an insurance company and, and do social media. 
or, or whatever the case may be. But if you want to stay, you know, in this industry, uh, keep listening to your podcast because that's where all the principles are. You know what I mean? Seriously, the mindset, you know, strategy, um, you know, health, wealth, financial stuff like that, because at the end of the day, you, you're keeping everything, you know, uh, at the forefront for people. And you're not saying, Hey, it's, you know, $999 to listen to all my podcasts. Right. Or at least so I don't think you are yet. Right. <laughs> no, no, I, I so, don't, man. And I actually claim that my podcast is more valuable than a, than a, than a business degree at Harvard, man. I would have to agree 100%. That's what I say in, all my stories. I literally jump on a live on a live stream on Facebook and I tell people, go and check out my podcast because it's it, like, if you're trying to jump into business, trying right. to, to learn things about business and be successful, right? my podcast is more valuable than a Harvard degree, than, than a business degree at Harvard. So go and listen to yep. it. So yeah, yep. man. Man, so when we talk, when you talk about this, right, this this industry, right, right can right, you go a little right. bit deeper into like the business sure. model and like what is it exactly that, that that you do and all that? Sure. As as far so do you mean as a whole or what we do? So in, you said in like students, to, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Like your yep. your students. So talk a little bit about uh like your students sure. and like what you help them. With. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I've had students that you know, and I think I've sent you the link. I don't know if you ever saw it, but I, I've held about thirty two mansion masterminds. So I started in two thousand thirteen September. And I piggybacked, uh, or as they said that we were doing then, they say we were leeching off the backs of this company, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's a whole other story because if you know anything about a leech or a parasite, uh, it, it can actually grow faster than its host. You, you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? So anyway, back then we were we were hosting we were hosting all these events, and people were coming from the bigger events to to my you know our events, uh, traveling beast mastermind. Uh, we were affiliate beast mode at the time. But, but the point is that we would host these events and I would charge anywhere from, you know, a thousand to $2,000. You stay in the mansion uh, for the weekend. And I bring in leaders like Cater and Nate and Scott, and Gabriel, and all these guys who, who would come in and then teach e-commerce and advertising and different things like that. Where I came into play is a lot of times the network branding, you know, helping these people kind of see uh, further than they could see. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'll kind of help them see over the mountain, like, okay, well, why don't you launch like cater? We launched a uh, Craigslist traffic bananas in 2013 on JV zoo and he did 85,000 his first month. Right. So what, what I did personally was kind of the, uh, I'll say the affiliate manager in the sense where I managed everything. And then like Jeremy Watson, he built out the, uh, co contest page, the affiliate pages, uh, all the imagery that was needed to do like a big hyped, uh, contest and, and affiliate launch. So I did a lot of affiliate launches back then. Now, now it's a little bit more so catered to, to e-commerce in the sense, but I also get people who are building an MLM and I'll teach them how to do ads. Uh, so basically we'll charge them for the year of services for e-commerce. And I'll say anything on the side that you need, we'll do a Zoom just like this, show them how to do Facebook ads, show them how to do Bing ads, things like that. But in the past, you know, from like 13 to 16, uh, 17, because I think our, our last event we had was 18, but I was going full steam in 17, 16 still. And these guys were coming in. I mean, I won't, I won't say too many names, but I'll say one guy I remember was coming, paying me his last 500 bucks uh, to get, you know, he gets to the event. I'm like, here, I'll you 500 more. And now, I mean, this guy has a McLaren, a Rolls Royce. You know what I mean? Probably paid cash kind of thing. Um, and, and he's doing really well uh, for him and his family, most importantly. So, so yeah, I could literally name Three, three to five dozen people go look at this profile look at this profile and you could inbox them and they'll say oh yeah Jermaine is he, he's helped lift me so mm -hmm. that could be anything from funnels to paid advertising to to, to branding just kind of seeing over uh, the other side uh, mapping out their modules because a lot of times people put out content uh, but they don't they don't understand where to start and so I like to kind of dumb them down slow down to speed up kind of thing so let's slow down and figure out what's module one what's module two what's module three and when you walk people through that at the end of it, like, they're like, oh my gosh, this is the first level of, of my program. I can't believe it. You know, and then I kind of incrementally try to walk them through doing it and say, okay, create your first five modules now. And then when you're done with that, we'll move on to the next level of, of modules. And so some people will be like, it, it'll be the next meeting that I'll have with them, you know, a Zoom. And they'll be like, well, I didn't get those five modules done, you know, but once that's done, what's next? Well, we don't have anything to talk about because the five modules are not done. So I'll see you next week. You know what I mean? So they're like, oh, wow, this kind of really holds me accountable. So accountability, branding, uh, overall understanding of the industry, because like we said, there only 3% will really succeed in this industry. So, you know, being able to take somebody from, from not really knowing anything um, to, to understanding, you know, the, the flow of, of business, like building a funnel, getting a lead magnet, right? Like this, this, these podcasts, 
could be, I don't know how you utilize them, but it could be a lead magnet for people into um, your program, right? Uh, and then getting a tripwire. Well, it's like, well, I got a $27 course or a $97 course. So kind of creating that um, ascension value ladder. Mod value ladder. There you go. And it, it, everybody uses it differently. So um, I've even saw people preaching on Facebook ads now to get away from that. But I feel like that's a way for them to kind of entice you to their uh, way. But they'll say, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, everyone's teaching ascension models. If you don't know how to ascend someone from one level to the next, I don't care what it is they're not going to go with you. They're going to go with someone else because somebody else is going to be able to kind of help them grow up that ladder as, as they build. So, yeah. And so that's why I'm, I'm doing the challenge, right. To, to, to right. Like, uh, get people who maybe cannot afford the, the, the high ticket, $4,000, $5,000 ticket. Right? right. And who can gain a lot of value from a $47 thing that I'm going to like absolutely over deliver with. And they're right. going to be like, Holy shit. If, if this is, if this guy is giving me this for $47, what is he going to give me for like, Four thousand or whatever, or whatever, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah, and, and and like that's how you you like you know you like send them, man. One thing that I liked about what you said, man, was uh, the events, right? You would invite people, right. right? That who who were who were like who explained advertising, marketing, Facebook ads, the funnels, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned something really cool that like you were like the the network guy, right? I really like that, man, because this is yeah. what I'm doing. Like that's part it. of the yeah. the purpose for so so like there's this not not it's not the value of ladder it's the ladder of value right it's, right, right, it's right, right, implementators right. integrators implementators uh i think it's managers managers or no, implementators unificators right that's right. the network unificators okay. you unify a group of people right. to like then give value in implementators right. unificators uh managers and coaches and then thinkers right so right. the implementators for example in a hotel the implementators are the ones doing the work right changing the sheet doing the laundry Uh, brooming and, and and all of that doing the food right and then the the uh, the unificators are the ones who are unifying all of all all of those people to for a for a for the for the same mission right for right, right, to right, get right. one result and then the managers are the one who manages are the one who manage the unificators who manage the the other ones and then the thinkers are the like the like the like owners right who just like right think about the vision think about where they want to go And they're the ones who get paid the most, but you know, quote unquote, do the less, the less work. Right. But because like right. thinking is, is hard work, right. Not a lot of people think there's actually a quote that I really like. That's, I think it's, it's it goes something like this. 15% of people think that they think, right. 5% of people think 50% okay. of people think that they think. And the other 80% of people would rather die than thinking. Than think. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. so like, that's why thinking is 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 what makes you the most money so what, what you back to what you were saying right now it sounds right. like you were the one like doing the thinking and you unifying right unifying and communicating right with, with the group of people which right like is really valuable yeah. and uh that's what i'm doing man with my podcast so the purpose for this podcast is to obviously motivate inspire and bless other men who are at a at a like right um more earlier Stage, right, point right, of their journey right right uh, and also to like build a network because in 2023 i'm gonna make a 10x conference type of type of event and I all i'm it. gonna have to do is just invite my podcast guests yes do all the heavy lifting for me exactly and that's exactly what what i did i mean i've, I've had up to about 20 maybe 15 20 people speaking then i've had up to about 75 80 people in one mansion you know and then we've done like uh hotel rooms, you know, different things like that, a little bit smaller setting. Uh, matter of fact, I have one, my student that I speak of, uh, January 13th to 15th, I'll be going to speak at his event. And so he does the same thing now. So it's very powerful. The last one I did was 2018 Vegas, right before, no, was it 18, 19? It was like right before COVID and I was going to do another one then COVID hit. And so I haven't done anything since, but I'm like itching to not just even have an event, but even like his event, just get to his event, you know, and I can't wait to see what, what you do with yours because Um, I, I realize all the connections you have. You, you share with me, you know, all your podcasts, the, the screenshot, screenshot yeah. of food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's, it's next level, literally, of uh, the, 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 the caliber of people that are, that are on your podcast, which is, you know, again, while I'm grateful to be here and, and definitely, like, as, as I mentioned, I just got back. And so, you know, share the, I'll share this with, with some people that I believe are going to be, uh, or actually even need your, your clarity challenge. And so I hope that they can get some, some great value from that as well. But yeah, 47 bucks, man. I mean, you know, that's the kind of thing that, that people I feel need and they actually cling to because it, it's less risky. Well, I can invest $47 and, 
and and get so much value versus let me go pay five grand and now I got to wait for my website to be built. And now, you know, it's just a lot of times things, people don't get you to the results. And that's one thing that I like to focus on with my clients is, you know, seeing that first sale in seven to 10 days, you know, and it sounds like a long time, but, you know, under promise over deliver. So if I say seven to 10 days, they might see it in three or four or five. And then now they have a result. So they're excited, you know, like with your challenge, they get in, mm -hmm. you, you know, you get, cause I know you have framework and, and all these different things that you walk people through when it comes to clarity. Now you walk people through some, some type of uh, clarity um, uh, checklist, you know, like in, in, you don't mind if I share one of my book, my first book, like, go ahead. Man. Period. Okay. Yeah. So like my first book I have, uh, it's called Thought formula. So in there uh, you could break. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to tell you that this podcast has completely changed my life in ways that you could never imagine. And I would like the same for you. Look, you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with. And the fastest way for you to level yourself up in every area of your life is for you to connect with people who are where you want to be, build relationships with them and connect with them. The best way for you to do that right now in the digital age is for you to start your own podcast. And I just wanted to let you know that I have a free training that you can get free access to. It's called the 30-Day Net Worth Skyrocketing three-step podcast cloak track framework. And it's going to show you how you can start and automate everything in your podcast from finding your ideal guest, getting them on an interview with you, and creating an automated content machine in just 30 days. By executing on this free training, you're going to be able to connect with high-level people, no matter how rich, famous, or out of your league they may seem, in just 30 days with less than one to two hours per week so that you can increase your net worth, your authority, your trust, your client acquisition ability, and your, your opportunity. So there's a special link for this free training in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Bye-bye. Down, like, like talking about what you're talking about, like um, building your brand, uh, what would be your ideal first event, you know, stuff like that. So we've mm -hmm. done these at my events and like walk people through. And at the end of that, even though it's it, to them at the moment, it's just excitement, you know, they're motivated. They, they got a result though. You know what I mean? They, so like yeah. with your frame, like with your framework, they're like, wow, okay, now I'm ready to execute. And so then you kind of gradually bring them to that next level. Okay, go now, go create your modules. Now, now go get a brand, right? Like you have a, a brand in the background. Clearly, every time I see you, I see your brand uh, for your podcast. And so anyway, like I said, just getting people. Yeah, uh, yeah, I didn't even recognize the, I didn't even see the shirt. That's awesome, man. So it says modern gentleman. Modern, right modern here. gentleman. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, you know, taking people through those different levels is what it's all about. And to be able to see someone like you that's, that's truly excited, not just about your growth, but theirs, right? Because there's so many people where, and you can feel it, you can hear it. You know, I'm a, like, we're salesmen at the end of the day. Let's be real, right? At the end of the day, we sell something, we're a salesman. But when I speak yeah. to sales, when I speak to sales, when I go in and buy a car or, or whatever it may be, if I feel like they're just trying to suck me in, I'm good. But one thing when I bought my Mustang and this was, I don't know, 10 years ago, we walked onto the car lot and the guy said, uh, so we started looking around and we're just all over the place, you know, and he says, look, really nice guy. He says, look, man. And, and my fiance was with me. She said, he says, do you, do you guys like this car? Hmm. And we're like, oh well, yeah, well, you know, this and that. He says, no, hold on. Like, just stop. He says, when you find a car that you like, then we'll talk about the price. You know what I mean? Versus just trying to sell me a car. And so anytime I get that kind of uh, treatment with people, I'm just, I turn off and I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even going to give you my business. So what I'm saying is like dogs can sense certain things. So can humans. They sense when you're just trying to suck money out of them. Right. And so uh, it's just good. It's a, it's a good feeling to see someone that actually, you know, cares about their clients because, you know, I, I feel like I'm very similar by nature where I really want to see someone win. Um, and that's very needed in this industry. People that, you know, how much I see how much time you put into your business, man. And, and I tell you what, and you already know this, but you keep doing that five, 10 years. I mean, even two years, like you said, you're going to be having those events and, and let me know where to, to sign up. <laughs> cool, man. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, man. Mm -hmm. You, uh, I, f I feel flattered, yeah. but yeah. Oh, of um, course. Yeah. yeah. Like all of this work, man, it's like for people, it's like to, to help them. Yep. level up to help them shorten the amount of time right to to right to shorten the gap to collapse the time that is going to take them to be right here successful happy and fulfilled and right fulfilled, yeah and that's what it's all about like and, and uh, yeah you know it, it fills me up to do it right talking to you talking to other men uh of course. saying that i have a podcast that is worth more than a than a business degree at harvard yeah that you know that makes me you know it, it fills me up with pride but like at right, the end of, of the day like the the reason that i'm doing it is to fulfill my purpose, which is to like serve others. Right. right. Uh, one podcast, one podcast like this changed my life. And like, I want to do the same for other people. So. Right. Yeah.
I love uh, it. I love it. Man, what does FOF mean? Uh, foundation, offer, follow up. Right. Cool. So, cool, so cool. I got so so how we talk about the 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 niche page, mm -hmm. the click the ClickBank, right? And and then you know the follow up would be like a webinar or or an email follow up. So basically in, in here I just break down you know foundation offer follow up. So fan page or website or whatever offer like this could be an offer if you're selling your podcast and then and then the follow up could be a webinar an event. Uh, something like that. And so I go in, in depth on that. And then my second book is all about daily routine and consistency, which is 247 blueprint, because as I mentioned earlier, we have a 247 business, right? Especially if we're actually thinking the 5%, right? And we're not mm -hmm. just not thinking. Um, so yeah, so foundation offer follow up. Yeah. Cool. I like it. I like it. It makes Thanks, sense. Yeah. Foundation offer follow, right? Yeah. Uh, cool, man. So, <clears throat> so man, uh, well, is there any time that you like, you got to cut this off because uh like this is this was no, supposed I, man i just looked yeah. at the clock and i didn't realize okay. that like it's almost over right like officially it's almost over right, I don't right, know right. If, if like you have to cut it off or whatever no i mean I, i've got at least another 10 15 like i said I'd ha i have until 12 it's only like 11 50 so we're, we're good man cool. if you want to carry on yeah mm -hmm. cool man so uh i actually finished my podcast by asking five four yeah five questions okay and uh you mentioned the framework right that i take uh you know people through And yeah, right. I call it the five M's of success. And it's, okay. and this is like the second time I'm revealing this in, on a podcast, but I call I it, it the five M's of success, mindset, okay. map, motion, measure, money. If you want money, okay. money equals results, results right. physically, emotionally, sentimentally, financially, right? If you want results, if you want money, there's four things that you got to get right. You got to get the mindset right, right? You, you know, uh, feeling worthy, uh, you know, limiting beliefs or whatever, having the right mindset, map, right, right. right? the clarity, like the, like foundation offer uh, follow-up follow right up. like that, right, that, right, that right. would be a map and then the motion motion like you said actually being consistent actually taking right. the action and then mm -hmm. measure tracking right because when you track grows when you measure improves if you don't track you will always fall back so right. mindset map motion measure money if you get this four rights you'll get the money and uh, wow. uh, at the end of the, my podcast i always ask five questions and those questions have to be have uh, you know have to do around those five things okay. right okay so like now i have like 25 interviews and every guest i've asked this same five questions so like it's really cool because all you have to do is like fast forward to the end and you're gonna right. see that the answers to those five questions man there's a there's a common theme that that repeats again and again and again right and like okay okay there's where the secret to success happiness and fulfillment lies at the right. end of my podcast when i ask these five questions i've asked them to 25 people now And they've all, they've all, you know, responded in a, in a very similar way. So, okay. Right. Success leaves clues. So the first question, man, is what would you do? Like if you could evoke, if you could go back in time to like, let's say when you were 18, 20, right. 21 or whatever, right. uh, like what would you, what, what advice would you give yourself at 18, 20 or 21? What advice would I give myself at 18, yeah. 20, 21? Okay. Well, and it's not like you regret the, what you did, because if, like, if you didn't go through everything that you went through, you wouldn't be who you are right now. But, you right. know, like maybe if you wanted to be bigger or, or you know, no, better, yeah, or I mean, yeah, or whatever. Ex exactly. A little, little, little more bolder in the sense. Right. Or whatever. Yeah. So or, I, I, or, would, I would definitely or, say, go ahead, go ahead. Or, or be where you are now without like the, the pain and the suffering and all the struggle. Right. So right. what would you say? So I saw a lot of people say this. And of course, I'll get into the, the, the actual answer. But I would definitely tell myself to buy Bitcoin uh, seven, <laughs> year, seven years later, right? No, really. Uh, and then that would just, we, we'd all be off the map. But no, really. So in regards to starting over, I mean, or what I could tell myself would be to, uh, you know, ex one, just execute uh, faster, you know, get things done in a, in a lot more productive way. Because in the, in the beginning, when I first got fired, you know, I, I was like everybody else. I thought money, Skittles were going to fall from the sky. So I wasted a lot of time. You know what I mean? So I, I would tell myself, don't, you know, like you said, ha have the, the, the balls, right? And the belief to do it and just do it. Because I spent a lot of time uh, twiddling my fingers, you know, if you will. And, and that's what held me back for so long. Therefore, uh, you know, I went broke basically and had to, to do things the free way. So I would definitely just say, uh, like we said earlier, just have more, more balls and belief in the sense that I'm worth it and don't struggle so much with uh, my past, you know, because my mm. past says, oh, you're not worth it. You were a bad person. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So I would have got out of my own head um, and got into action. 
you know cool. um yeah and then when you're taking action make sure that you do it effectively and efficiently not 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 so much not not so much hard work but like smart work smarter right exactly versus harder yeah makes sense and now that you're talking about that right um in order to achieve great things you got to be high performing and in order to be high performing you got to have your mindset dialed in and uh, right. there's seven pillars that i talk about for high performance man right and there's clarity which is at the foundation for everything clarity energy right. drive and courage this okay. first four clarity energy drive and courage determine if you take action right and at the foundation there's clarity like if you have clarity energy drive and courage like this is determine if you take action and in order to have energy well energy is like you, your body if you eat good and you're exercising and all of that right 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 but of course courage and drive like if you want to be driven and have this like stamina and drive and courage to take action like where this comes from is clarity clarity on like what you want to right. do right on knowing mm -hmm. what you want to do knowing right. why you're doing it not just to like like we were talking at the beginning make some money but right, like right. actually knowing why why is it important right um you're like knowing your purpose, knowing who you are. And then if you attach a mission to that and you're not only doing it to make a couple of bucks, but you're like, you have a mission that's going right. to fill you up with, with driving courage. So clarity, energy, driving courage, clarity is the foundation. And this determines if you take action. And then once you're taking action, you want to make sure that you take action effectively and efficiently. So the next three are discipline, consistency, and focus. Right. Okay. And those that like, those are the seven traits of uh, of like being high performing, right? So the first four determine if you take action and the second, the, the, the next three determine how good you're at taking action, how effectively and efficiently you're taking action. So good. I just wanted to, you know, piggy, no, like, yeah. Piggyback and on that. I love that because the, the fact is, and like, you know, I got sick of teaching people over and over again, right? Foundation offer follow-up. So we talk about like, uh, what do you call it? Acronym or whatever the case is, right? Where it stands for something. And so, the fact that you can actually walk people through these different things sets you so far ahead of people, right? Because people are like, well, just do this and do that and do this, but they don't understand why they're doing it. They don't have the clarity like you just spoke of. So for like example, for me, when I was making money and building teams and all these different things, I says the only thing I want to do is this is, you know, tagline traveling beast is travel, live life. And I want to do it in that order, right? So if I travel and live life, make money, help others. Okay. Because if we don't travel, live life, make money, we can't help others. Right. If we're not building our own businesses, that's why you see me extract myself a lot of times. It's like, okay, well, I'm doing this and that because we're servicing our customers, you know? And so the fact that you actually have framework, there it is. The framework for it is, is amazing because m most people won't do that. They won't take the time to think, like you said, 5% will think you thought of that. You know what I mean? That that's your framework, right? Whether you kind of learned it somewhere else and you put your own words on it or whatever the case may be, or you just came up with it you're in that 5% thinking. So it's just, man, I mean, it's, uh, it's what most people won't do. You already said that. So. And, yeah. and, and then now the hard work is, uh, recording it, man, recording yeah, yeah. the process, like right. not only having a framework, but like putting it down so that other people can follow. So actually well, I, I just got into a $30,000 mastermind right now. Okay. And I actually got paid to get into it, man. Nice. I got in for free. Because mm -hmm. like this guy who who's hosting the, the mastermind, right? Like the coaching right, right. slash mastermind uh, program. Um, right. You know, we're in the, like the same business, right? We, we, we sell belief in balls. Okay. And, um, and he, you know, he has the, the profile, like he's a grown man. He's like 40, you know, 40 some. And he, he looks really good. You know, he has yeah, yeah. it all. He has right. physical freedom, emotional freedom, sentimental freedom, financial freedom. So he's the type of man that you would like to work with. Right. Of course. Of and, course. But like on the back end, he didn't have the back end stuff. Right. Like he didn't have a, you know, a system uh, to take people from point A to point B things that are recorded. Right. Like a program, an actual program. So the way that I got into it and, and is, uh, and then I built, you know, I further built my network is I got into it right. instead of paying. I, you know, I, I help him with my, with the back end. You know, and look, man, we're doing the same thing. Let me help you and, and let me be exactly. part of this network. Let me be part of this uh, this program. Get your mentorship because he does definitely think bigger than me, man. I've right. gotten on a couple of calls with him. And um, like just this talk that we're having, man, the perspectives are so different from the rest of the world. So whenever right. I get on a call with this guy, like shit, like the way he thinks, it, like it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's priceless. Like, you know, he gets right. me out of thinking small, which is the problem with the, with the majority of people like thinking, yeah. thinking small, right? So yeah. 
Yeah, and I just wanted to say that. Okay, so the second no, question, man. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yep. Is uh, I can like I can go on and on and on and, and, and yeah. That's good. <laughs> well, good, good for your clients. Yeah, you, yeah. But well, go ahead. <laughs> um, cool. The second question is, man. So, what is one mindset shift, right? Okay. That you can that that you had that you can share, that um, has allowed you to you know like. Uh, travel, live, make money and help others, you know, like that has allowed you to have the, the, the lifestyle and everything that you have right now. Well, back to belief involves confidence, right? So back in 2012, I was telling one of my mentors, Desmond, I'd say, I just want to make 10 grand a month. Right. But in the day I would make 200 bucks and he called me, he'd be like, Hey, where are you at? Like you said, if what you measure grows. Right. So he would say, I know you want to make 10 grand a month. Where are you? And I'd be like, Oh yeah, I'm done for the day. It's, you know, $200. I'm going to dinner. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. And he's like, bro, you, you want to make 10 grand a month, but $200 a, you know, a day times 30 is, is 6,000. Right. And so when he said that, it made me really think about uh, what I was doing, you know, so I was spending a lot of time, but the results weren't there yet. You know what I mean? I wasn't making $333 a day. Like I, like I needed to. And so the, the mindset shift was that the, some of the same things that I was charging you know, $25 an hour, or $50 an hour for whatever consulting or selling a pro program or whatever, I could then bundle that with my own program and charge X amount more. You, you know what I mean? So the confidence mm -hmm. level going from, you know, say a $47 program, but actually charging the 997 and having confidence enough that someone will pay it. And there's one thing uh, between wanting to give the value like with you, okay, you know, you want to keep it at $47 That's one thing. But then not having the confidence to know that it will sell for 997 is a whole different thing. You know, you don't have that issue. But example would be that, right? As someone that, that like myself, that thought the same $200, I mean, this, the same actions that I was spending from eight in the morning until eight at night or eight in the morning till five or whatever, or four in the morning till 5 p.m., I could have made in, in a lot less time or I could have made a lot more money, right? So, you know, like you said, thinking bigger, uh, I've personally had clients where they're charging two grand for something that should be 10. And vice versa, you know, there's people that charge 10 grand for something that should be two, but, but that would be another shift is, is being able to know that what you have is, is worth that much more. And so, uh, knowing your worth was a sh huge mind shit, uh, mindset shift. There we go. Uh, for me, because until that point, you know, I was just happy that I was making what I was making at my job, you know, mm -hmm. but the reality was that the, the, the actions that I was going through should have been paying me 20 30 grand a month but i was only making six seven you know what i mean for i don't know six seven months and so once that that mindset kicked in i realized that it wasn't the value that i that that i wasn't delivering i realized that it was more so that if i shifted a few things and actually got a little bit more aggressive with the client spoke to them in a way that no one's ever spoke to them that they would just take off and, and that's what happened you know i mean i've got on calls with people that by the end of the call they'll just say you know what i'm gonna charge two thousand now and then they do that and they, and they start selling different bigger programs and stuff like that. I mean, you know, Keisha is definitely one of them. I mean, she wasn't selling $2,000 programs, let alone four or five or 10, you know, but her, but that mindset shift that she had once we got off a call, that's all it took, you know, for some people, it's a call for some people, you got to walk them through and teach them everything. And then they get it. You know what I mean? But for some people, it's just a, a switch. And so for me, the switch was just that call where he said, bro, you're not, you, you, you sound Charge like more. <laughs> yeah, well, well he, because I wasn't making sense. I'm like, yeah, bro, I made two hundred dollars a day. You know what I mean? Like, this was 2011, 12. But I was like, yeah, I made two hundred dollars a day. You know, da, 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 I gotta go. You know, and he's like, bro, like we could work longer, easier, do more things, drive more traffic, or whatever the case was, and you could make five hundred, and you could be making fifteen thousand dollars a month. But because you're not thinking, I wasn't thinking then, right? Like you said, you know, it, it was limited on on what I was making, and and it got me by, but also got me in debt. You know, as to where mm -hmm. I could have just learned a little bit quicker. And, and, uh, not had that, that period of, of a year where, I mean, I was, you know, I felt like I was going to lose everything. The world was coming to an end. You know what I mean? I was crying in my office kind of thing, you know, and that's the reality of what a lot of entrepreneurs won't tell you, you know? And so, uh, and it's actually better when you charge more, because when you charge more, people actually take you more seriously. I was right? like, say, like pe people who pay more, pay, pay more attention. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I was, that's yeah. exactly what I was gonna say. When people pay, people pay attention. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. So confidence and, and, and like, uh, charge your worth. Right? Yeah, know definitely. Your worth. Definitely. Cool. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a, a you know, the people want results. So it doesn't have to, you know, a lot of people say, well, why don't you bust out your Maserati and, you know, your 
all the all your cars and and do these flashy hyped up videos because then I'll attract the wrong people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so like with you, you're attracting people that want a framework in their business. They want the mindset. They want the clarity. They want the wisdom. They want to be successful, um, not just the money, you know? And so that was the thing that was kind of the stigma, I guess, as you asked about earlier in MLM as well, is that there was this the stigma or whatever you call it about, uh, well, if you just join for $10,000, you know, next week, you're going to be making all this money. But that's what the sales video told them, right? I didn't make the sales video. I just sold the program. And so that that's why you know, I started realizing, wait, people are paying five to $10,000 for this program, but I only get 500, you know, commission. Why don't I just charge five to 10 grand and, and take all the money, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Man, so uh, the third question is, uh, let's see, it's map. Yeah. So yeah. do you have any strategy or any, any habit, anything that you do to make sure that you always have clarity in your life around where you are and where you're going? And, uh, and like, what is it going to take to get there? Well, I mean, me personally, I wake up and, and I pray every day that I'm taken in the direction that I need be. Here I am with you, right? And mm -hmm. almost got diverted from that today, you know, because of the banking issues I was having. So me personally, I just pray every day that I'm taken in the direction I need be to. I have a strong why, you know, so I have kids now, you know, eventually uh, I'd like to have grandkids, you know, that kind of thing. So for me uh, personally, it's just an internal uh, clarity. You know what I mean? And I have uh, one of my, uh, he used to, is Eddie Zeman is his name. And he joined one of my programs uh, and he used to coach uh, MLB. Mm -hmm. And when I was working a lot harder than I needed to, and I was not spending time with my kids, I remember calling him one time. I was on the way to college because I was, I was going to college at the time, uh, dropping off my, my son and my nephew. And they were nine. My son's 19. He just walked out, I believe uh, now, but this was 10 years ago. And I was driving to school and I told my nephew and my son, I said, I know, because I was on the calls all day long for eight hours, 10 hours. I says, look, I know I'm dropping you off at grandma's house and I haven't had much time, you know, to spend with you. And I said, but, and then my nine-year-old so, son says, but it's, it's going to be all right. And I was like, wow. And it kind of, it brought tears to my eyes. You know what I mean? And so here's my point to Eddie Zeman. I told him this story. He's one of my clients, but he ended up being like a coach to me in a sense, right? A mentor. And so I told this story to him that I felt bad because I wasn't spending the time that, that I needed to with the kids. And he says, stop. You know, and he's got that raspy voice. He, has, he smoked a lot. So he had a thing in his throat, right? And he says, Jermaine, stop. You know, and I, I could just hear it in my mind now to this day. He says, don't do that to yourself, right? He says, uh, work and, 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 you know, anybody watching this or you could look this up, but it says work is love made visible, right? So he sends me the CD and it's kind of different, but in that it talks about, you know, clarity um, and understanding self so that you can not only have clarity just in business, but in life, right? So he says, don't do that to yourself. And he says, work is love made visible. And so later down the line, uh, my older nephew, he's probably, I think he's 20, 21 now, or almost 21. He came up to me, must've been, you know, again, nine years ago. So 12 years old and I'm on a call. And I, again, I'm moving and shaking. And so I'm just, you know, thinking, okay, yeah, let me keep going. Work is love made visible. And he comes up to me and he goes, big Jermaine, he calls me big Jermaine, my nephew. And he goes, when I grow up, I want to do what you do. And I was like, that's it. You know what I mean? That, that's why you, you continue to show uh, the kids and all that. And so in regards to clarity, again, I, I pray every day that, you know, I'm taking the direction I need to be going. One, two, I, I have a strong why. As far as actual framework, you know, I, I tell people a lot of times, you know, reading books, making sure that they understand, you know, themselves. We talked about, I think, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, our, our last call. And that, mm -hmm. do, you, do you remember that? Or Yeah, I do. Okay. And so that aligns with your, with your framework, you know? And so I think that a lot of times people, like we say, they don't think, so they need to better understand not just us, but themselves. So, you know, I ask a lot of questions with my clients, dig deep, you know, man, no one's ever talked to me like that. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. But as far as for myself personally, uh, it is definitely internal, you know, clarity and peace and, and knowing where I, I need to be and should be, um, especially with so many, you know, responsibilities and kids and nephews and, people that depend on us and friends and family and traveling like that. and traveling. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's cool, my clarity is, is being able to take off whenever we want, you know, when we want. And so. Cool. 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 Yeah. So man, the fourth question is um, what is like one habit that you have that has contributed a lot to your success? Consistency every single day, every single day being consistent in, in our business. So uh, John Maxwell says success is determined by your daily actions, right? So there's mm -hmm. times there's times where uh, I think I'm done, but I'm not, right? 
And so, you know, Ashley and I will kind of go back and forth and I'm like, okay, we're done. No, we're not. And so pushing myself to the point where consistently, uh, example, I'll, you know, like today I knew we had this interview. So there was things I had to do into one, two in the morning last night to make sure that nothing arises. You know, I haven't really looked at my phone much, but it, it's blowing up. But point is doing so much, being very, not pushing myself per se, but getting everything done ahead of time and then being able to sleep a little bit this morning. You, you know what I mean? So just the, those, the consistency of every single day. So uh, example is we, we run these stores 365 days a year. So there's not a day uh, throughout the year where we're not minding the stores, if you will, right? And so the only two weeks I have off is coming up the December 12th to the 26th. Even during those two weeks, I'll be doing something in my business. So consistency. So to where somebody says, oh, well, I'll just run, I'll just work my business on my day off, or I'll just work my business uh, X, Y, Z time of the day or whatever. That's fine. And we all should turn off the switch at some point. But I would definitely say where where we've been, where I've been able to get out of debt to, to rein in, in having, I mean, tons of different investments and, and seeing a lot of those mature is just being consistent, you know, just, just, yeah, yeah. just, that's it, you know, be, being uh, present and, and able to align with people like yourself and, uh, and grow in that kind of sense. So, yeah. Yeah, man. So yeah, 100% consistency. And guess what? Clarity leads to commitment. Commitment leads to consistency and consistency leads to victory. And if for some reason you're not victorious, you're not getting the results that you want. It's probably right. because you're not taking the actions that are required for you to get the results that you desire consistently. Right. And if right. you're not taking those actions, it's because you're not committed enough. And if you're not committed enough, it's because you lack clarity on, 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 on your why. Right. I love it. And I, I tell you one thing to tap in on that. I, I love your framework because the way that you speak, I can tell you right now, mentally, as people watch your podcast, they're, they're reaching in. Uh, because I do it, we, we do it. You say, well, ex expand on that, Jermaine. What do you mean, right? So, so when people are listening to your podcast, they're like, wait, clarity, uh, but wait, what did he say, right? So they want more, right? And so that message within that message within itself is powerful because if you actually think and come up with things, people want more, you, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like, okay, it's like I, I brought up the book, but then you say, well, what's my formula, right? But, but yeah. most coaches don't have any framework. They don't have anything. They just, oh yeah, give me your money. You know, so yeah. it's amazing to see that, um, you know, the value that you're giving in, in these programs. So you're going to have to Thanks, check man. that ch challenge out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Thanks, man. I, I'm glad that I sold myself. Oh, you, oh, hundred percent. I was sold before I got <laughs> on here. So <laughs> cool. Yeah. Man. Uh, though the fifth, yeah. The fifth question, man, is yep. metrics, man, measuring and tracking. Yep. Do you, do you, you know, like business, you should have, you know, like you should track, you should, you should have. You should know, you know, like how much it costs. So like right now I'm, I'm running ads and like, I have right. like everything lined up on, on the Facebook platform on the Facebook right. ads manager to know right. like how much a click is costing me to know how much, you know, like a, a page, a landing view is costing me to know how much, uh, like a purchase is costing me to know how much I'm putting in and how much I'm getting out. Right. So obviously right. for business, there's stuff that you got to track, right? There's oh, yeah. actions yeah. that you got to track. You got to track outreach. You got to track uh, right. positive response. You got to track everything. Right. Right. What about in your personal life, man? Is there anything that like you track or you measure? Uh, yeah. Can you maybe talk a little bit about that? Just, I mean, I'm going to be real. I don't have a spreadsheet like we have for all our stores, right. Mm -hmm. For, for my personal uh, focus and attention. But um, I, my, my attention is every single day brought out by different things. You know, I still go to college, right. And people say, why do you go to college? Because I love to learn. You know, my mom always told me take the long route and she's been going to college for 25 years. Right. Uh, she's a teacher though, right? So it's keeping her credentials and all these different things, but I love to learn. And so I've, I've, I go to college, you know, and, and I, I speak to different people that like yourself, you know, and just so many different clients where it, it helps me to, to better understand uh, them, right? In turn, it helps me better understand myself. But as far as like spreadsheets or anything like that, no. Um, I used to do some things like that, like I said, and, and even like in, in my book, you know, where we have a lot of the different things where you can track it and measure it and, and uh, craft your vision statement, how will your customers benefit from your brand, things like that. So as you start to track things, yeah, it, it starts to become uh, that you have more clarity, right? But like I said, for me, travel, live life, make money, help others. As, as long as we're doing that personally, you know, cool. I'm happy. But, but in regards to business, of course, we have spreadsheets and, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm taking accounting. So, you know, income statements and balance sheets and all those things are 
<laughs> make your your mind explode, right? <laughs> <don't> really... <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. So cool, man. That's why so, I say I'm in, interested in 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 seeing what you have inside of your uh, clarity program. Yeah. Thanks, man. And um, so yeah, those were the five questions, man. And cool. uh, thank you for being here, man. And um, so thank you. man. Like, I don't know, but like this hour went by, like it, it flew like by, that. like I, I didn't know. I just looked at the clock and I was like, holy shit, we're almost, we're almost done. Mm-hmm. So, um, so man, yep. if you know, like my audience, just like me likes you a lot and they want to know more about sure. what you do or, 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 you know, you know, get, get in contact with yeah, you yeah. whatever, like, where can they do that? Where can they find you? Uh, germainsteel.com, uh, or all roads lead here.com. So all roads Ooh. with an S, all roads lead here.com. And yeah, they can see my books and YouTube channel and everything on, on one page and appreciate the the plug. You know, it's funny. I was, and I'll tell this quick story. I was in uh, jury duty last year or earlier this year or whatever, got out of it. And, uh, and the guy says, he's like, you know, what do you do? They ask you all these different things. And I told him and he says, okay, well, you got to have a website, right? And there's must've been 60 people in there, right? And he goes, tell him your website. So I did. And I told the judge, I go, thanks for the plug, man. So anyways, it, it, every time I, I say thanks for the plug, it reminds me of the judge who's like in front of 60, you know, people who were trying to get decided for juror. Um, you know, and I shot out my uh, <laughs> website and everybody started laughing. So anyway, thanks for the plug. Yeah. Cool, man. And one last thing to leave to leave you with and, uh, and, and you know, and whoever whoever listens to this. There's a circle, man. There's a circle for business. So uh, I, I actually just did a training a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And the first the first pillar that I covered in that training is that business is a game that has levels. And at every level, you must level up, right? Right. Your way of thinking, your skills, uh, and, and like your character must level up. And there's this circle, right? And it goes like this. It goes skill, right? Like mm-hmm. all you have to do in business to, to make some money is like get a, go and get a skill. Like we talked about in the beginning, go in, right. run some ads for a local mm-hmm. shop, for a local business, and you're going right. to make some money. And then skill, right? Then you got to build some character, right? The consistency, right. the discipline, the, the courage, the, the perseverance, the persistence, some like strong character that is going to help you be successful at a high level. And right. then that's going to take you to, to a certain level, right? So that, that skill is going to take you to a certain level. Then the character is going to take you to a certain level. But then in order to level up, you're going to need a mindset. You're going to le- need to level up your mindset. You're going to need to work out, to work through some limiting beliefs, stories, uh, doubts, fears from the past or whatever. And that, and then it's a circle, man. And that's yeah. how you level up, right? You level up your skill set, you level up your character, you level up your, your mindset, right? And then you get to a certain uh, point. And then again, you got to get level up your skill set. You got to level up your character. You got to level up your, your, uh, your mindset and it's right. a circle. And I, love it. I was reading, uh, I've been reading a couple of, of leadership books because that's okay. my vital, that's my vital improvement that I'm focusing on. I have right. this thing called vitals, vital functions, okay. vital priorities, vital behaviors, vital improvements, vital metrics. So my vital improvements is like the one thing that I want to get better at, which is leadership this year. And uh, I, 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 uh, I read a couple of books, a couple of leadership books, and it applies the same, the same way with leadership, man. Right. Right. So for leadership, this skill, character, and mindset, right? So look, same thing. It's performance right you gotta be able to track your team's performance and then for character is trust you gotta be able to build trusting teams and then for for the mindset for the belief it's belief in the just cause and your company's mission right so right. so like in order to like be a good leader this is what you gotta get this is what you gotta keep, keep treat track of you gotta keep, right. keep track of the performance you gotta keep track of the trust within your company right the trust mm-hmm, which is mm-hmm. like vulnerability being able to share right. The, the confidence, right? Like the culture and right. then um, the mission, like the mission statement and the just cause that your company is, is after, right? And, and it's a circle, it's a circle. This is how you are a good leader. And then you got to put people first, customer second and profit third, right? So right. it's will over resources. And, and then everything intertwines. I really right. like, I, I haven't gotten clear. I haven't made this, this, this thing mine, you know, like mine, right, but, right, right. but like it's starting mm-hmm. to like, it's starting to like solidify. Yeah. 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 So uh, something else is, uh, let's see. So will before resources. Oh, okay. So, and then in order to like have high performing teams who trust right. you and work hard for you and go out of your way to produce. Right. There's three things that you got to give them. you got to give them a sense of purpose, which is the just mm-hmm. cause the mission. So for example, right. 
I'm not in business just to make money. I'm in business to impact people and create modern gentlemen who have it all, right? Right. And 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 when you frame and when you have an employee and you frame that what they're doing is helping other people become modern gentlemen and have impact and build a legacy, like holy shit, it gives them a purpose. So right. giving them a sense of purpose, making them feel protected and making them feel safe, the higher mm-hmm. hierarchy of needs, right? So yep. making them feel safe, having the psychological needs, uh, physiological needs, food and shelter and mm-hmm. a community, a culture, and then, right. and then having a purpose. Right. That's how, that's how the whole they do. That, that's when you can step into self-actualization. That's when you can step into having employees that actually think. Yeah. Right. And then the third one. So having a purpose, making them, making them feel safe and, and, and protected right. and compensating them well. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to leave you with, man, and leave whoever is listening with. No, I, I, I love it. And I tell you what, when I used to run uh, restaurants, when I would make the people part of the goal, you know, we're going to get an audit or we're going to get, you know, we got to get this goal. And things would move so smoothly, right? But then sometimes things would get hard and you're like, you know, you're kind of, you have the heavy hand. It, it didn't work as well, you know, put it that way. So, you know, we'd, we'd make a goal to... And I tell them I, when I get my bonus five thousand every quarter or four thousand, I'm gonna throw a big party, and I would raffle off TVs and DVD players and Nintendos or whatever. And and you could see when I was there how much faster and diligent and and how much more stamina they had just based on the belief of them actually being part of the bigger picture, like you just said, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and same thing with within the industry. You know what I mean? When I used to do like challenges and and and, and just. Uh, weekly trainings and webinars and stuff for my teams as I was building MLM, you know, if, if I made them part of the goal, it could be, it could be my goal, you know, even then. So, but they would still feel like they're part of it and they would want to help to obtain and reach that goal. So, I mean, everything you're saying full circle makes total sense. And, and I think that that's why, you know, again, you're doing so well, man. So keep it up. And, you know, thanks for having me on. Like you said, this hour and a half has went by like that. I did tell, I did tell my, uh, I, I was thinking maybe 12, 12, 15, but I told my call is 1230. So I'm, you know, I'm good. Um, and cool, she's cool, good cool. too. She's actually one of my um, former uh, shift supervisors who just started a store. She tried to start a store about five years ago uh, or wanted to, but never took action. And then she reached out. I was in Vegas a few weeks ago and uh, I says, yeah, the prices went up significantly, but you can still start a store, you know? She's like, man, I should have started then. I says, yeah, you know, you should have. But <laughs> anyway, that's who I have a call with is one of my former uh, employees of about seven years. So cool. Yeah. Well, good luck, man. Um, Thanks, yeah. man. thank you very much, man. Thank you very much for being here. It was a, it was a pleasure. It was an honor, uh, having you and, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this talk. Thanks brother. I'll see you on Facebook and thanks for having me on and, uh, see everybody later. Peace. See you later, man. Take care. God bless. You too. Thanks. Thank you for watching the gentleman success, happiness, and fulfillment talk podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with one friend, leave us a comment and let us know 99% of people never leave a review or comment. But we love and are very thankful with the one percent of you who do if there's something or someone you want to see on this podcast send me a message on instagram at alex underscore ramirez 1020 and let me know i say thank you for that i have an amazing surprise for each and every one of you who does take the time to leave us a comment or review on youtube or one of the major podcasting platforms 